back. Now we're going to do Texas Platinum. Texas coming off a nice win against Baylor, 27 to 16. Wasn't the most fun game, most impressive, but I mean, Texas showed some improvement, which is good to see. Uh, Trevor, Matt in the house. We're going to break it all down real quick, then go into Oklahoma State. But uh, go ahead and subscribe if y'all are here. We really appreciate that. Uh, we're always trying to get more subscribers so we can grow the channel and like the video. That'd be cool too. So please do that. Uh, but yeah, let me pass it off to Madrid. Uh, uh, me and Madrid were talking before the show about how this game was just kind of like not that exciting. And uh, let's just, let me just pass it over to Madrid. Yeah. What was your, what was your opinion on the, uh, um, yeah. I mean, first half, uh, if you like good football or exciting football, you should have just tuned out <laughs> and, uh, watched the Khabib fight like I did. And I'm sure you guys did. No, a lot of people did. Cause it really didn't get interesting till the second half. We held him like three points in the first, um, um, half, which is good by my standards. I'll take that. Uh, I'll bite the bullet on this one. I was dead wrong. Um, uh, and I should probably should have known that, uh, uh, us playing a team that hasn't played in three weeks because of COVID, but I was just so down in the dumps in the last two weeks, so hopefully you can forgive me. Although I will say it's a game we definitely should have won, and thank God we did, and Baylor is clearly clearly um, let's say rebuilding. They are what they are. They're going to be a mid-team in the Big 12 for a while. I mean, I like Dave Ronda who's doing there, and the defense looked like he, they could for a little bit, but yeah, we just looked like we we took care of business. We covered the spread uh, for the first time in two games. I don't even know. Well, three games actually. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, those are my initial thoughts. I'm glad we won. Um, stopped the bleeding, and uh, yeah, and everyone. I, I one last thing. Us getting to the run game that was it was so nice to see. Um, it was so nice to see Sam take it under his own. Um, power to 12, 12 55. I'll take that from a quarterback any day. So yeah, those are the main things that I liked. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would have to say that, um, first off, those throwback unis were a nice yeah. sight to see. I, I was kind of hating on them earlier in the week. Cause again, maybe it was just our, you know, mentality ever since losing the OU and really kind of getting a, a nice look at, the reality of this football team, uh, straight in the face. But, yeah, very cool. Um, I actually think they look really good um, and would not be opposed to seeing them more often um, in that brown football helmet. I mean, we, we always harp, harp, it, harp about that quite a bit, and it just looks so much better than the, than the other burnt orange one. Just that darker just makes it a bit more menacing and it pops more. So good to see on that end. But in regards to those throwback uniforms, I felt like we were watching football in the 1970s at the beginning. Looked really good. Uh, because all they did was run. Um, I think Sam passed the ball twice in the first quarter and not that much more <laughs> in the first half. Um, I understand, you know, setting up a run game. Um, but also when you have a quarterback that is one of – I mean, he's not – he definitely hasn't shown to be an elite passer this season. It's been a bit disappointing, actually. Um, but when you have, you know, a super talented senior quarterback like Sam and an elite, uh, well, very talented, we'll not say elite, very talented wide receiver core, um, and you don't pass the ball practically at all for a half, that's not very good, especially when the strong seed of your team is not running the football and a blazing weakness is the offensive line. <laughs> I will not call that a winning game plan. I think our defense probably played the best game that they have all season. Um, granted, well, outside of UTEP, obviously, but don't even really count that. That was a practice. Um, but even then, again, Baylor hasn't played in a long time. Their offensive line uh, is not very good at all. Um, so that's probably why our pass rush looked a little bit better and our defensive line looked better. Um, but even then, they were definitely able to kind of make a comeback towards the end of the game. And, yeah, as the game went on, we started to open up a little bit more, pass more. But even then, we didn't really put 
you know, our foot on their neck or anything like that. There, there wasn't a resounding, you know, running away with the game, uh, which I feel like if you're watching a good Texas football team, that would have happened. <laughs> but we're not. We're watching a very average to below average team that beat the team that it should beat, but beat them in a way that an average team does, <laughs> which is by, you know, barely beating them. And that, that's always kind of been Tom's mentality for whatever reason. Um, he's been quoted multiple times saying that as long as we win by at least one point, that's a win. And I, I in some regards, sure. <laughs> but yeah, for, for a top tier job and a job at Texas, especially, um, like any blue blood uh, winning by one point against an inferior opponent is not a formula to keeping your job around here for very long. So all in all, very pedestrian game. Um, as Myers said, definitely some room there. There was signs of improvement, but uh, nothing to rave about really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, let me, build off what you said on the offense uh just like in particular the personnel um some of the positives were definitely the first one that stuck out was jared wiley i mean we've been harping for him for a while now yeah, thank God. and uh Good to see yeah him. yeah i mean he's like an nfl he's got nfl potential for sure just that frame and he's just he's really natural at pass catching at six seven and he seems to know how to get open so we got to really just i mean with our receiver room looking really just average outside of maybe Josh Moore, um, you got to find a way to get Wiley more touches, like it, like over five per game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really promising seeing him. I know Cade Brewer is still going to play just out of, like, necessity. I know a lot of our uh, formations are two tight ends, and he can help in the run game, I guess, and the leadership. But he, he, he should uh, – we should definitely prioritize Wiley. And then also Josh Moore, uh, he looked great. Uh, which is good to see because, I mean, he went off against Texas Tech, then it seemed like he disappeared after the first two games. And mm-hmm. uh, he had a great game Saturday. He had that really good, like, Moss catch on that Baylor DB, which was like, really athletic, which is what we, we need more of that. We need more playmakers that receive. We don't seem to have them right now, which is surprising. They had three blacks slow as hell. <laughs> Our whole yeah. team is slow as hell. <laughs> Yeah, we're yeah. That's true. We are what, so slow. What is going on? Like, what 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 has Yancey McKnight done? <laughs> I feel like we've gotten so slow. Running backs, receivers. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe a little faster than he was last year, but that's because he lost weight. Yeah, it's it's kind of like hard to watch. I mean, there's like two plays that stand out from the Baylor game. The uh, the Tariq Black, obviously, looks like he had ankle weights on. Maybe he got hurt on the play or something. I don't yeah, know. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But then the other play was we ran like a reverse, I think, or like a sweep. Was it to Josh Moore? Yeah, and yeah. He just got ran down like this Baylor DB, like a cheetah against like a little deer. Like it was, it was crazy. Like these are Baylor three stars and two stars that Matt Rule just found and developed. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's concerning. It's got to be – um, a development issue, mainly in the strength program. I, I've heard that Yancey likes to prioritize um, just getting their like maxes up and powerlifting, like bench, squat, deadlift. And I don't think you need to be focusing on that, especially for skilled players. Um, you need to focus more on explosiveness and speed. And then also Herman needs to definitely recruit faster dudes. I mean, we don't yeah. we get a lot of big body receivers, possession receivers that just don't have that burst. And that's why we, we see that in the combine. We don't have anybody besides Duvernay really that, goes to the combine and looks fast and you checks out athletically. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, but overall, the offense did good. Um, the run game looked okay. I mean, it was good enough to win. But I think Herman actually decided to run the ball more just to, like, get everybody off of him for all these penalties because you're going to have less holding penalties and false starts in the run game than you are in the pass game. So, I mean, it's kind of like he sacrificed, like, possibly, like, points going downfield to do less penalties, be more disciplined. Because we only had five penalties. We still had the curse setter debacle. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to feel about the offense, man. Like, I know we average a lot of points per game, but it also feels like we're offensively challenged at times, too. So, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's a weird situation. We just make boneheaded plays. I mean, we could talk about that Kirkstetter, um 
unnecessary <laughs> run. I don't know what the hell. Dude, you're a captain, man. Like, what the, <laughs> the hell are you doing? He was like, he took out like not not even not only the player, but like five people on the Baylor sideline. <laughs> the coach. One of the coaches. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't know. I just it just goes always it just always goes back to discipline for me, man. I just like you're a captain. You shouldn't be making those mistakes. He's clearly like three yards out of bounds. Yeah. It's obvious. Um but yeah, I mean that was that was the only real I mean, minus the five penalties, but I'll take that instead of what was it, nine? Nine we were averaging. Right. So yeah, I mean I'll I'll Personally, personally, I liked seeing the run game. I liked seeing Bijan uh, split carries with Keontae. I thought that was really interesting. Um, and and them combining what, what was it like one hundred and hundred and something yards combined, like splitting carries. I, I'll take that. I'll take that. I just think we need to be more dominant in the trenches and to open up the run, uh, the passing game, just to get a wide open receiver for Sam. Because for some reason, I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't know if he's regressed. I don't know if uh, this is always who he's been, but I don't know. Last year he was throwing dimes like on the money, and this year it's not. So I'm 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 fine with reverting back to the run games if it if it looks that good, in my opinion. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. if if we've. Uh, I'm not sure if Sam's regressed or not. I, it's very hard to tell. Yardage, yardage wise, no. Like, you know what I mean? Because like, yeah. he's a up and everything like that. It's just like in certain throws, the accuracy is just like. Oh yeah. It's just, uh, that, I, that's what I'm. That's what I mean. I, I mean, like he's he can't throw the ball anymore. It's just sometimes. No, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the deep ball definitely has not improved for him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, last year I think by this point he had a lot more NFL level throws. I mean. Exactly. And, LSU, um, hell, even Oklahoma State last year. I know that he hit through some really remarkable throws. Um, But thus far in the season, outside of maybe a couple in Texas Tech and maybe UTEP, I haven't – I really haven't seen any NFL caliber throws. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, All in all, the team (laughs) definitely doesn't – you know, doesn't look any better than it was last year, and last year was a disappointment. So. And our punt team, uh, might as well bring that up, uh, punting is a liability. Um, we've said this for a while, but uh, last game was further proof that we cannot punt the ball for shit. So. Yeah. I miss Dixon so much, man. Uh, we got his cousin. Don't we have another Aussie behind him? Do we? I, I, I think we know. recruited another Aussie, I, but it's not really. Aussies. Just teach him football, man. That's all we need to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Myers, any final thoughts? Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the offense. Like you said, Sam's definitely regressed as a passer, and I think that's largely because he doesn't have Lil Jordan, Colin, or Duvernay to bail True. him out on these balls that he just throws in their area, and they're they're likely gonna catch him. No go to. Mm. Yeah, he's got no go to guy, and uh, and I'm not saying that's like it's still Sam's fault. Sam needs to build those relationships with his like Brendan Eagles. There's no reason that Brendan Eagles and him should not be like on the same page and like have that connection. It's like Eagles is a junior, Sam's a senior. And Mm. then there's, yeah, there's a lot of guys in that room that should be better with Sam. So yeah, that was, that's really disappointing. And um, it hurt. It sucks, man. Cause it was looking like he was going to be like a NFL, like, like an actual legitimate (laughs) prospect. And then now it's just like, yeah, he's just a fullback. That's a great Great runner, great team leader, a good college quarterback, but yeah, his good passing his passing is yeah. just falling off um, without these receivers. And uh, I just want to read a quote about what Tom Herman said about Derek Kerstetter. He said, "Captain Kerstetter, if you will, there's no malice, no lack of discipline. It's overzealous effort that needs to be curtailed. Overzealous effort. That, like this is why everybody hates Tom Herman. Like." What? Like he literally shoved a player. What kind of mentality is that? Yell at this guy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Call this guy out. I mean, you don't have to call him an idiot or something. Just say it's unacceptable. It's something we'll talk to him about or something. Let's just. I love the effort. <laughs> hey man. Yeah, he he has that principle. He's like, uh, 
effort penalties, like late hits, uh, blocks in the backs, uh, all that stuff, targeting. He, he's fine with that, he says. He says he, he can't handle, like, false starts, stuff like that. But effort penalties are all good in his book. And, I, I mean, we're seeing that. I've we never heard of effort penalties. That's what he calls them, yeah. He's so, he's so goofy. So when was it Kirk Stetter that pushed the like pushed was it the was it the Tech game where he OU. Uh, in late it was OU. OU yeah it was him right yeah that's an effort penalty same guy yeah <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right whatever sure well, the stupid penalty whatever the euphemism you want to make for it sure <laughs> okay the team penalty it's that good enough mentality it's yeah good enough hey it was. It's just, I don't know. Demand greatness. Mm-hmm. Demand excellence. Definitely. Uh, last things on the, on the Baylor game. I mean, the defense did look good. I loved our pass yeah. rush. Not that many sacks, but definitely affecting the quarterback. And secondary was in the right spots. No really broken coverages. And, I mean, everybody played well. But then again, Baylor's offense looked horrible. Yeah, I'm not going to put too much weight on it because – they didn't, they couldn't move the ball that much anyways. Yeah. And they have this they have a really bad O line, like notoriously bad. They like yeah. had trouble getting people like suited up. So I mean it it was a good win, but I mean it wasn't something that's like, okay, Herman <clears throat> something flipped a switch during that, that bye week or whatever. Yeah. Um it's just like it seems like it kinda just slopped out a win. I mean we did play good in the third quarter, which is good to see. We haven't seen that recently, but yeah, I mean all in all, I would grade it like as a C plus game we won though so can't complain too much i guess yeah okay so texas travels to number six in the country oklahoma state still water this weekend and it's kind of a um a very important critical moment in tom herman's career right now um oklahoma state is favored they're undefeated they control their own destiny for the playoffs still and that's just with mike gundy it's just kind of whenever that happens it's just kind of like you raise an eyebrow because he's been been known to like get close, but not get over the hump. So this is definitely a spot where Texas could Mm -hmm. rise up underdog mentality with Herman and win this game. But Hey bro, we're dogs again, baby. Let's get it. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Back where we need to be. Yeah, baby. The hunters. (laughs) We better remember the hunters, not the hunters. Right. So, I mean, but then you look on paper and I just, I really feel like Oklahoma State is just a better football team all yeah. around. Um, defensively, uh, that's what you look at first, at least I do. I mean, you, you, when you hear Oklahoma State, you think of their three-headed monster on offense. But I look at their defense. I mean, they got so many veterans on defense. Um, and it's that D-line of theirs. Number seven, I believe, in, the, in, in rush defense in the country and number 20 in pass defense, which is just incredible. Like, in the Big 12, you don't see that. It's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So, um, and just – Thinking about their D line versus our O line, that's just kind of where I'm lose confidence in, in this game being like a one where Texas and Herman can rise up and dominate like physically. I, I think we're gonna have a lot of issues. So I'll pass it over to Trevor. Uh, just give us your quick thoughts on Oklahoma State and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean they're definitely they're definitely a good team. Um, I, I do think that their record and everything is – it's not misleading. It's not like there were any games that they should have lost that they won. Um, but they haven't – outside of the Kansas game, which is Kansas, who looks to be horrible again, um, they haven't really dominated any team that they've played. Um, yeah, they've all been relatively close games. I mean, Iowa State, I guess, was the one game where they looked – supposedly the most dominant outside of Kansas. Um, but even then, Ohio – not Ohio, <laughs> Iowa State, um, I don't think is all that good. I mean, honestly, any team in the Big 12 isn't all that good this year. Um, but, yeah, uh, and they didn't dominate them as well. Like, it, it was comparable to us beating Baylor in terms of the eyesight test. Um, so, like, a, a a win, but not – nothing to really, you know, get overly excited about. So I do think that, you know, that even though they are somehow ranked number six, I guess just because they haven't lost yet, and they, they, they're they the only undefeated team left in Big 12, that's probably why they have that ranking. Um, 
as well as, you know, uh, pretty highly rated offense and defense. Um, but yeah, so I don't think I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously worried <laughs> about this game, uh, just like any game this season. Uh, but, um, I don't know if they're quite the monsters that, um, some people might think they are just from the outside looking in. And Vegas says that too, because it's only like a three and a half line favoring Oklahoma State. And ESPN actually has Texas uh, with over like a, a slight edge in winning this game over mm-hmm. Oklahoma State, which is surprising. I don't understand that, but um, I guess people still <laughs> somehow have faith in this team. Um, but yeah, so not too much on my end in terms of Oklahoma State, but that's what I got at the moment. Yeah, um, you touched on like them not looking as dominant as they should. I think a little bit has to go with the with the Spencer Sanders was out for the majority of that time. Mm-hmm. I watched a little bit of the game um, of their game, not too much to be honest with you. Uh, but looking over what he did. 20 for 29, 235, a touchdown, and then another one on the ground for 71 yards. Sounds like the good old Spencer Sanders of what we've seen in the past. So I think them getting back to full strength is what really concerns me the most. Um, it's obviously a boost with Thailand and the uh, Tywin. Thailand, right? Thailand? Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. My bad, Tywin. Shout out, Game of Thrones. But um, – yeah, uh, I think that's a boost for their offense as a whole. It makes Thailand a more of a threat and takes the burden off Chuba. But, I mean, Chuba's going to do Chuba things. And, uh, yeah, um, I think I think that, that being an underdog again is probably – I mean, I hate being an underdog, obviously, but it's probably the best situation for us. Uh, I mean, expectations – uh, at least for for a lot of people is that we lose this game. But Matt was always right, uh, also right in saying that Mike Gundy always finds a way to fumble himself out of the national contention. So uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm optimistic about this game, but I would say cautiously optimistic. Um, they're just better than us on every level right now. Um, I'm trying to think, except for an except, but. I don't know. Their defense is just very good. It's it's veteran. It, it has veteran players, and I don't see us even stop trying. Like, not I, we'll try, but not successfully stopping that offense. So that's my initial thoughts. Yeah, I mean, their offense. They got players. I mean, you think of Chuba, Talon Wallace, Spencer Sanders, um, but there's, they have other guys too that I like a lot, like Dylan Stoner. He's been there forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a good option at wideout, and I really like. What's his name? Brayden Johnson, the other receiver. Yeah. Um, he's super fast. Like I feel yeah, like yeah. he should be better than what he is. I feel yeah, like he's next up. Underutilized. I don't know what the deal is with them, but he looked really good last year in the Texas Bowl, and uh, he just looks like kind of next up. I don't know. I don't know if he's been wasted or not, but he looks really good. And then LB Brown, their backup running back. I mean, do it most of the season. I mean, up until last Saturday, it looked better than Chuba in my opinion. Um, so they got kind of like a two like two really good running backs with a pretty good O-line. Um, I mean, their O-line was suspect to start the year, but they definitely improved. But then you look at their defense, and, I mean, uh, they're just pretty stacked. I mean, Malcolm Rodriguez, I feel like he's been there forever, too. Same with Amen, Ogbon, Bumiga. Uh, there you go. Yes. You got it. Yeah, they got some players, man. And uh, Trevor brought it up. Amen is also from Canada, along with Chuba, so – Gundy's really working that Canada pipeline, so it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, man, they got a lot of good players. I mean, you know, people say Texas, we got more talent. We, this is an inferior team. I wouldn't say that. I feel like their talent is developed enough. To, like, they're, they're just as talented as Saturday. They'll have just as much talent on this field as us. So, I think, really, we're going to have a lot of issues um, trying to move the ball on their defense. If we can't, like Herman said, if we can't beat man coverage, uh, it's going to be really bad for us. And, um I just don't know. I don't know if our receivers are up for that. We need we, we need uh, Jake Smith to be very healthy that game, and we'll see with his hamstring. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, it's just – like, I really don't – like, I could see this game going, like, three different ways. Like, so, I I don't know what to expect. 
Yeah, me either. Um, it's crazy that they're still undefeated. It just feels like a weird year in the Big 12 all around. Like the top teams, I guess, or Iowa State, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma maybe, right? Probably. Kansas State. Like, they're Kansas. undefeated too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, they're undefeated too? My bad. No, they lost to uh, Well, yeah. that Big first 12. game. Oh, in the Big oh, 12. Oh, yeah, 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 in the Big 12. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um. But yeah, it just feels weird. It feels feels weird. Um, um, I don't know how this uh, how this is this conference is going to end up at the end. It looks like OU is storming back. Um, yeah. They beat TCU, so I mean, I guess that makes us look even more shitty. Um, but yeah, I, I I just don't have confidence in like Oklahoma State or Iowa State finishing it out. I don't know. It just yeah. seems like every scene is a thousand times what happens. Be I see it. I see it being OU, Oklahoma State, in the championship game. Wow. I think OU is gonna. <laughs> I think OU after that, after beating us, is gonna just roll back, uh, finish out the rest of the season undefeated, and make their way into the championship game again. And Oklahoma State has the edge because they don't have a loss on the resume yet. So True. that's what I'm thinking. But, yeah. Um, an area that I think we can have some success with is uh, just Spencer Sanders. I mean, I know he's a really good runner and he's going to cause us problems, probably extending plays and, and having some good scrambles and getting first downs. But, I mean, through 12 games, he's thrown for 17 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. He's also he's had some sure. fumbles. Very. Yeah, so he's definitely prone to turnovers. And, I mean, our defense, I feel like, under Herman, typically we have really – done a good job of forcing turnovers i mean against baylor we really didn't we dropped like all those interceptions but oh gosh yeah so hopefully we got to catch yeah. those interceptions this weekend because i think that's that's one area where we can really kind of like con- control the game and because we're going to need turnovers um because i just don't know how our offense our offense is going to need short fields and momentum plays like that so that, that's kind of i wanted to get that out there i i feel like shane illingsworth I, I just from what I've seen of Oklahoma State, I don't know if their fan base probably they could be like cringing when I'm saying this. I don't know, <laughs> but I felt like Shane Illingsworth has looked better for Oklahoma State. Yeah, than what I've seen out of Spencer Sanders. I haven't seen enough. Um, just as a passer, I mean, under Gundy, good passer. He's never, yeah, he's never tip, like under Gundy. They've never had a run, running quarterback, run first quarterback, and that's what Spencer Sanders is. They've always had Mason Rudolph, Zach Robinson, um, whoever else. Uh, Whedon. Brandon, yeah, Brandon Whedon. I mean, they did have J.W. Walsh, but he was kind of like a flex guy. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like Ellingsworth has that Oklahoma State uh, Cornelius vibe about him where he can just, like, throw it up and yeah, let his good receivers make plays. So, I mean, that's something to watch. I could see us, like, stifling Sanders early with some turnovers, and then he puts it Ellingsworth, and then he starts shredding us. So, um, they have options at quarterback, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. Nice. But, uh, should we go into predictions? Anything else I got in Oklahoma State? Um, I don't think I know enough about this team. So <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about us. Uh, what do we feel favor- favorable matchup-wise going into this game? Or do we not at all? I mean, we got I, the more experienced quarterback. I guess there's that. Yeah. I think um, Chuba Hubbard. I mean, last year we played Chuba Hubbard, and their O-line was probably better last year at Oklahoma State. And we did a really good job against them against the rush. We did. So mm-hmm. I, I feel like we can replicate that again, especially with Oklahoma State's O line looking like it's like a little step back. And uh, Chuba's had more uh, trouble this year get, breaking those big runs off. So I think I think we might be doing well on defense, especially like in the front seven. Um, it just depends on like we can shut down Chuba, but then if Sanders starts pulling him and breaking out these big runs, then it's just like it'll all go to crap. So. Mm-hmm. I think we can shut Chuba down, but it, it, the question to me is if uh, we can shut down Sanders um, on those runs. See, I'm a little bit reverse as you. I mean, looking, I'm being at the the state, uh, the Oklahoma State game last year, and I thought we did a really good job on Spencer Sanders. Um, um, and I think we kind of kind of repeat that a little bit, and just reiterating all the facts you you said, but uh, and just reverse it on Sanders, honestly. Yeah, yeah I mean. Keontae Ingram had a great game, like his best game of his career against Oklahoma State last year. Mm-hmm. A lot of the same players on defense for Oklahoma State, so maybe he can uh, replicate that. 
on Saturday, and that'd be great. We need a running back to have a breakout game like that, especially with our O-line uh, not being too great. Having running backs making plays would be really, really, really clutch for us. I mean, we need that to help us them out. Yeah. I think we need to have Bijan step it up and kind of have – it'd be nice to have his breakout game come at about this time. Uh, uh, it's it's understandable for him to have a bit of a a bit of a uh, not slow start, but learning curve. Uh, yeah, a, a learning curve is the, is the right word for it. Um, thus far in the season, um, but I do think that he is so much more considerably talented <laughs> than Ingram and and Roshan. As much as I love Roshan, um, neither of those two guys have really stepped up and claimed the starting position for themselves, which mm-hmm. to me shows that they aren't starting caliber running backs. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're two running backs. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that Bijan, that this is finally the game that we start seeing, you know, that uh, elite playmaking ability out of him. Also, uh, Jameson, we haven't seen, anything out of him really yeah. since uh since utep he returned a kick for a touchdown but it got called back for holding um but since then he really hasn't and granted when whenever people have punted and kicked to him it was always like a uh, they'd kick it out of you know out of bounds or or you know they'd punt it in a safe way to where he couldn't return the ball so i guess he really hasn't had opportunities but mm-hmm. um that is a part of our team that I think is really mis- missing um, and our special teams, you know, this season has just been so bad in general mm-hmm. that if we can get that back and get like a spark, um, that would be huge for the team as well, especially in playing, you know, in yeah. still water, which is always kind of a difficult place to play. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm curious how our, secondary is going to hold up against Tylen Wallace and their good receivers because Baylor is not known for their receivers or passing game really at all this year. I mean, Oklahoma is kind of, and they shredded us down the stretch. I mean, it's going to, you're going to take your lumps, but, and same with Texas Tech, that was really bad. I mean, I know we've been um, improved every week, it seems like defensively in the secondary too, but I think this game will really just like show us like how far we've come. Cause I mean, I, I could see Tylen Wallace just terrorizing us all day long. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, Gundy's yeah, got the game plan cooked up to get them one on one with our corners, and so we shut them yeah. down pretty well last last Those, game. We did a really good job on their offense last year, so mm-hmm. yeah. Adam Mora had like a really good game too. So mm-hmm. a lot of guys have had good games last year against Oklahoma State, like that kind of took a step. So hopefully, we can have more of that this year. Um, but luckily, it's not a night game, which is cool. I know, <laughs> I know, it's like half capacity or whatever, but. You watch that Oklahoma State Iowa State game. It, it's rocking. You know, you know, Stillwater senses some urgency. It's oh like yeah, water. They know that this this team could, you know, maybe go to the playoff if they, if they keep doing what they're supposed to do. So yeah. I, I expect it to be a ruckus crowd, and and that also concerns me because Herman has been absolutely just horrible on the road. Like, there's no way, there's no way to like spin it. Like, he's horrible yeah. on the road, especially in the Big Twelve. So I expect a really miserable, not miserable. I don't want to be negative, but. I expect it to be a really tough game, and uh, Herman's got to show me something because we haven't seen him go win a big game on the road in his career. So, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, I guess last thing, unless you all have anything else that we should touch on on this game is, um, does a win do anything for you guys? If we went out and won this game, either convincingly or a close, hard-fought game, does that make Tom Herman's seat any less hot? Has the Baylor's, you know, thing changed it at all for y'all? What are y'all's thoughts on that? Well, the Baylor, Baylor thing, I don't, I don't think it's changed at all. This, this game, I'll, 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 I'll turn down the heat a little bit, but I need to, it needs to be very convincing. Um, I need to see – the thing is, he'll win a, if he wins a big game, a lot of people will be like, oh, we've got to keep him. But th- there's still problems, like, underneath. Yeah. So, for me personally, uh, I think 
I would I would still have the heat on him even if we do win. If we do win, I need it. Uh, uh, I think it'll be close. And the only way for it not to be to be significantly different for me is we just go out and dominate. But I I've been waiting for this team to dominate for four years, so I don't know. When yeah, we haven't done that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Like Matt Madrid said, I mean, if we do go out and say we dominate and win the game, like with a, in a pretty convincing manner, it'll be like, yeah, well, we're showing a little bit of improvement, but it'll also be just like such, just so frustrating. But like the TCU loss is looking worse and worse every week. TCU looks horrible. Their yep. offense looks horrible, and they shredded us up. Doug, it looked like a Heisman against us. Yep. And um, Oklahoma. I mean, we were one and four against Oklahoma. We can't win that big game. And then Texas Tech too. I know we won that game, but we looked horrible that against that too against Tech, and they don't look good at all either. So if we start when if we win Texas Tech, I mean, if we win Oklahoma State, sorry, like I'll be like, I mean, good for the team, good for the players, but it doesn't show me anything about Tom Herman improving. If if we went out and then like go to the Big Twelve Championship and pl- play well in that game, then. I'll, I'll, my opinion will shift a little bit. But, I mean, this is what Herman is. He'll go and beat an uh, Oklahoma State team or play them really close, look really good. Exactly. And then we'll play West Virginia at home and lose. Or it, it's just, yeah. So, yeah, I mean. You can't, you look, you can't win the semi big ones. And I'll call this like a semi big one because it's Oklahoma State. And then just drop TCU like that. Right. The, the, that There's a serious problem. If, it's like we need to get the little ones so we can build up to the big ones. You can't just hope to God we just show up on the big ones and just hope to God it goes our way because we we play up and then just play shitty against lower teams. That, that no, there's still a problem there. So yeah, and it, he's done that every single year as a head coach. Every you go look at every team he's coached the last five six years, it, it, they all have those just inexplicable losses. Like with, with some good wins, some big wins, but. I mean, at Texas, you can't do that in year four with all your players. So, yeah, and, and he's done it like twice now. I mean, the Baylor – I mean, the TCU loss was horrible and the Oklahoma loss was – I know it's a big game, but we were just so unprepared for that. So, yeah, you can't just have these games where we just don't show up at all and just look horrible. Yeah, yep. we're just milling it in. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think my opinion will change much. I think if we lose – if we lose to Oklahoma State and it's kind of an ugly loss – I wouldn't be surprised to see Herman just like demoted, like midseason. Uh, just, I mean, from what I've been reading and stuff, I feel like Herman's on very thin ice. And I think a loss to Oklahoma State, maybe not Oklahoma State, but another bad loss, like say we lose West Virginia at home, yeah. I think that will definitely, um, you know, like pull the plug. And I think it probably will be done midseason. So it, it, it's it's really interesting time, to, like for the fan base and all, all the Longhorns because. It's just so – it's so it, – I don't even know how to explain it. It's just a really weird time to be a Longhorn. But, I mean, I'm excited to see what's going to happen Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my, my thoughts are pretty much the exact same as y'all's. Um, it's funny because uh, in watching the press conference this week, it makes you wonder, <laughs> like, is Tom all there? Like, he, he's, he was really hyping – I mean – I know Oklahoma State's, you know, a good team, but he's talking about them like we're playing Bama this week. Like, man, I've just been been watching film nonstop on these guys. They're so good. I'm like, he's either doing one of two things, or maybe he's doing both and covering his ass with it. He's either hyping up this team so much that if by some – well, not some miracle, I think we can beat them. But if we beat them, like, oh, shoot, we we just beat like – Right, we beat a top ten team. Yeah. Um, that's not actually really. I I don't think deserving of a top ten team, but record wise, they get it. So sure. Or if we lose this game, it's like oh, well. oh, as Oklahoma State guys, I mean, on the road, you know, we cold expect- October day, we'll like this crazy year. Yeah, crazy year, crazy year man. You had to give me another new system, man. <laughs> like. He's totally covering, you know, yeah. um, at this For point. Real. And uh, it's Politician. it's embarrassing to see, in my opinion. Yeah, I want to add one thing real quick on that. I, I can't stand his thing where, like, well, our coordinators have only coached these guys for about three months now, like in, in person. Like, Herman, do you not realize that it's your fault that you hired 
bad coordinators <laughs> in the first place and had to fire them in year three. Right. Just, like, that's not, this like, isn't not like, something maybe Crystal Conte could say, but like this is all you're, this you're is you, doing. You're, this you're is the re- you're, like, yeah, you're, you're the reason this happened. So I hate him using that as an excuse when it's like literally his fault that we have new coordinators. We shouldn't have to four. go through that many coordinators. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's uh, Tom Herman's press conferences are very nauseating at this point. So yeah, like Trevor said, if if we lose, if Herman like the, the press conference is going to be really interesting uh, and frustrating too, probably. Yeah. All right, let's make predictions. We've let's talked long enough. Uh, who wants to lead it off? I'll I'll lead us off. Um, yeah. So I have it written down. I, I have Oklahoma State beating us thirty-seven to twenty-eight. I think uh I think it'll start off to be like a uh, like we'll, we'll show up early, but I think what you, what you see with Texas a lot is um, at least this season we'll, we'll get some adversity and then we'll just shut down. Like I don't know, maybe like a pick six or something, and then they'll have all the momentum, and then we'll just be clawing back the whole game, maybe like a backdoor touchdown. But I, I think I don't think it'll be a close game in the fourth quarter. I think Oklahoma State's gonna pull away in the second half and win win pretty comfortably by like 10, 14 points. So yeah, I. I I hope I'm wrong, but I think Oklahoma State's just a better football team. They're at home, and uh, this is their moment, you know, to go make that next step in their program. So, yeah, give me the give me the pokes in this one. Sure. I guess I'll go next. Yeah, um, sure. I I also have us losing to Oklahoma State um, by uh, by nine. Is that what I've written down? Yeah, by nine. I have uh, I have I just lost it. Oh, whoopsies. Yeah, I have us uh, 40 to 31. Um, yeah, I I just don't like going to Stillwater um, yeah, or, or just playing Oklahoma State in general. Uh, last time we beat Oklahoma State in Stillwater, uh, Tyrone Swoops was our quarterback. Uh, fun fact. And, <laughs> and last time we played on Halloween, uh, we got shut out by Iowa State under Charlie Strong. So two very uh, not, not so good times uh, to think back. Um, so maybe call me a little bit, uh, not superstitious, but uh, a little stitious um, a little of stitious. this game. So, yeah, I mean, Oklahoma State just seems like the better team. And I, I just haven't seen us at this point, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, why would you expect it to suddenly happen that, we actually start stepping up to, you know, our potential and actually playing big in big moments. Um, I think we kind of played to the competition. That's been our issue for the entire Tom Herman era. And, um, yeah, I don't think – I don't see Oklahoma State blowing us out. I really don't. Um, but I would be surprised if we won this game. Well – Someone's got to be a homer. It's going to be me. It was Trevor last week, so he was right. So I'm trying to get that uh, the good juju on my side. Um, I got us 38-35. We're winning. It's going to be a really close game. It's going to be a really close game. Herman is playing like his job is on the line because it is on the line. And Sam's going to want to – Sam's going to want to push it to them for, the, for all the pain they've caused us and for knocking us out of contention that two years ago. Um, yeah, uh, it's going to be close. I think it'll be really fun. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, 38-35, Texas. Speaking of that last game that we played in Stillwater, I was watching the highlights today. Um, I don't know why they came up, but we look so much better back then. Our yeah. team was so yeah, good, good. On That was the year. That was the year. I was like, what happened? That was like, the year, man. Oh, uh, God. I, I think we undervalued Andrew Beck because that dude was pretty damn good. I mean, he I don't think he really, you know, got too many passes, but he was definitely used a lot in that game. And mm-hmm. Dante Ingram looked a lot better, and our O-line used to be so much better than it was. Mm-hmm. Ugh, I it, agree. Yeah. I, I noticed that too. Whenever I see a 2018 team, like highlights or old games, like it, it's good. it's night and day, just the whole energy and physicality and the mm-hmm. way we play from what we see in now in 2020. So, yeah, that's another another bad look for Tom Herman. Regression. Mm-hmm. Big time, big time. 
Uh, any last any last thoughts, boys? Or are you ready to get out of here? I'm good. We'll see what happens. Mike Gundy, Tom Herman. Maybe there'll be another fight at the end of the game, <laughs> like last time. That'll that'll be something. Yeah, Herman's gonna go down swinging. Yeah, if, he, if he loses, he's pretty much fired. So <laughs> swing at him. I'm just gonna swing at him. Yeah. All right. Um, awesome. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, hopefully some good news. Either way, Herman being fired or Texas winning, I'll take either. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> please subscribe, uh, hook up horns, and uh, yeah, it's just have See a good next time, boys. Stay frosty, it's Stay cold out. Yeah. <laughs>